Today we're going to be discussing how Figma integrates with Apple Vision Pro. Now there's two ways that you can do this. So the first way is that you can use Vision Pro to connect to a Mac and it brings up the screen. You can scale the screen. You can move the screen around and use Figma the traditional way. Mouse, keyboard, the only gesture control you have is pinching the window, resizing it, moving it around, placing it wherever you need to. When you have your Vision Pro connected to your Mac, you can definitely use the browser to design in Figma, or you can use a native app that Figma has on the Mac. So in this first way, you are definitely bound to the mouse and keyboard in order to do any design work within the Figma application. One of the obvious benefits to this is that you have a large 4K display that you can adjust, move around, set anywhere you want within your space, all of that to accommodate your needs. However, you're still going to need access to the mouse and keyboard in order to do any edits within Figma. Now the second way to do any design work within Figma is using the native Safari app within Vision Pro. Now this could be a little bit more challenging, so we're gonna dive in to see if it's even possible with the limited controls to design within Figma. Because this way, it is all gesture based. You can't use an external mouse and keyboard. And I have to tell you, it's crashed a few times, so it's not exactly stable. It's pretty buggy and it can get a little frustrating, but we're gonna try it out and see how that experience is. So you go to the figma.com website and you pick a project. Now, because you're not able to use the mouse and keyboard, everything is eye tracking and gesture based. So like I said, you're looking at the objects that you wanna select, your project files, you're pinching to select them, it's tracking your eye and then it's highlighting what you're looking at and you're able to select that page and go to it. Now we're gonna see how limited it's going to be utilizing just the pinch gestures. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. So that works pretty seamlessly. If you have multiple layers like this, I can see how it would be very frustrating to kind of sort through all that stuff, but it's doing it pretty well. Like I can select a layer and start renaming it. I can zoom in and out of the canvas. I can look at my library items. So if you have an existing project, this is kind of cool to go in there, look at everything in your library. Maybe you just want to use this to kind of demo some work, but you know, you can move stuff around. It's vision based. So you can inadvertently move something around that you're not trying to, right? And there is no way to undo this with a gesture right now. You have to go to file, edit, undo, right? And that could be pretty tedious. You're used to working pretty fast. So I'm gonna create a new art frame. It looks pretty smooth so far. I'm able to move things around. It's a little tricky to look at the small iconography that you wanna select, but it's doing it pretty well. So I'm really surprised on how seamless this is just based off of controlling it with a pinch. So let's get a little bit more intricate here. I'm going to create a banner in this, a very simple banner. It looks like it's drawing shapes fairly well. Now I've, I've selected the shape. I'm pinching and holding and then I'm creating the actual shape, I'm creating a rectangle here. Now I can look at the color picker, change the the shape to a different color. I can name my layer. I'm going to name it banner. So it's working. It's working all right. Now here's where it's going to get a little tricky. So I'm going to try to draw a circle on here, but it's not proportional. So I had to do this a couple of times until I realized, well, you're going to have to create the shape that you want. Let's say in this instance, it's a circle, but if you want it to be proportionate, you're going to have to manually key those numbers in.
Now I've got my circle on the rectangle. So you have multiple layers. You're looking at that particular layer and it's gonna select it. You can adjust the parameters. Here I've added a stroke to the circle. You can adjust those numbers. It's a little tricky because the parameter adjustments are so small and you have to look at them in order to select them. It makes it a difficult experience to make these adjustments. So as far as the basics are concerned, creating shapes, moving layers around, renaming layers, adjusting the parameters. So far, it's pretty, it's pretty good. I wouldn't say this is going to replace your current Figma workflow, but for something simple like this, or if you wanted to do a design demonstration, I think this would be the way to go. So I'm using the Figma text tool right now and trying to adjust the size. It's a little difficult. And yeah, it looks like Figma crashed. The whole, yeah, the whole browser crashed. It refreshed and it remembered where I was, but not the most recent changes. So it's very unpredictable of where it could have saved your last change. Yeah, obviously that's not a good thing. So, you know, working on large projects may not be ideal at its current state. But I think one of the added benefits of using Vision Pro, despite using the Figma application through the connection on the Mac or natively through the Safari browser on Vision Pro, is the ability to immerse yourself in these environments or to put the window anywhere you want. Like right now, I have it over the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, and I think that's really cool. So these are the two ways to design in Figma using Apple Vision Pro. Hopefully you will see a Vision OS Figma application in the near future, but for right now, it's pretty good. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more content.